I'm Welton Gaddy, host of State of Belief Radio. Can help hurt? Can good intentions produce actions that do more damage than improve a situation? Now, these may strike you as interesting philosophical questions to ponder leisurely, but I am wrestling with these inquiries passionately in an effort to protect religious freedom. Let me explain the serious issue we face. In the wake of the tragic devastation inflicted on the northeastern sector of the United States by Hurricane Sandy, compassion for the residents of that region grew, and Congress eventually belatedly voted federal funds for disaster relief for them. The story's fine up to this point, except for Congress dragging its feet. However, next, efforts emerged, just as they did in disaster relief discussions related to Hurricanes Katrina and Rita that destroyed much of the Gulf Coast region of the country, to change long-standing law and use federal funds to rebuild, restore, and redecorate houses of worship. In other words, Congress wants to use federal money to aid houses of worship in rebuilding pulpits, bemas, stained glass windows, Christian education buildings, Jewish schools, and other religiously oriented articles that you find in various kinds of houses of worship. Now, how could anyone be against such compassionate contributions for religious unions, members of Congress ask? Now, the answer to that question is critical and often misunderstood. Look, not even the devastation of a national crisis is justification for compromising or disobeying promises in the Constitution. Separation of the institutions of religion and government and no intermingling of government money with the money collected in offering plates as gifts of worship. Times of crisis are not occasions to justify setting aside basic principles and values, just the opposite. These are the moments in which those principles and values must prevail despite the emotions involved. Now, let me be specific. One, private contributions should fund houses of worship. Houses of worship respond to needs because of their belief in God and service to others as a means of obeying God. Government has no business funding work done in the name of God. To be sure, Houses of worship should insist that government does its duty in providing for the public's welfare. However, intermingling government money policies and guidelines with the compassion, empathy, and generosity of charitable giving from a church, synagogue, gurdwara, mosque, or temple is destructive to an important constitutional guarantee regarding the independence both of government and religion. Two, Government should not fund houses of worship at all. Repaying houses of worship for their ministries or providing the money for their reconstruction or rehabilitation. Framers of our Constitution intended to keep government out of religion. That's why government's forbidden to fund pervasively religious organizations and promote religious activities. Voluntary dollars should fund faith-based efforts and needs. Of course, institutions of religion and government can cooperate with each other, but neither can supplant the other or impose itself on the other. Precedent provides sufficient verification for this fact and warning for the dangers that evolve when this fact is ignored. The U.S. House of Representatives already has passed a bill making it possible for FEMA, the Federal Emergency Management Agency, to use federal dollars for the reconstruction of houses of worship damaged by national disasters. That is a sea change piece of legislation that runs contradictory to the promise of the Constitution. The Senate is yet to act, so the bill is not yet law. I've written a letter to members of Congress saying this. 
Hurricane Sandy's tragic impact reminds us of the aftermath of far too many other natural disasters. As a Baptist minister to a congregation in Monroe, Louisiana, Hurricane Katrina in particular is at the forefront of my mind. In times such as these, there is an understandable, compassion-based temptation to steer federal funds to houses of worship that have been damaged. But it is a temptation we must resist. An act of compassion must not be allowed to erode our historic Constitution. While I laud a motivation of compassion, I also call for common reason, lest as a caring nation we do a wrong thing for a good reason and, in the course of so doing, turn a misguided form of help into a vicious form of hurt related to our Constitution, religious freedom, and civil rights. Friends, we are smarter than that. And I hope you will help me make that point and avoid yet another bulldozer-like strike to the wall of separation that has made religion an important part of our nation without imposing it on those who stand apart from religion. Rebuilding a religious institution should not be the cause of tearing down our Constitution. I'm Welton Gaddy. For State of Belief Radio, religion and radio done differently.